These are the times that try men's souls. We've all heard that line before in grade school. Thomas Paine, December 23rd, 1776. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and the thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. Man, we do all rate freedom so highly, do we not? We are the freest people that have ever lived. We are free from hunger for the most part. There are plenty of impoverished people in this country, but for the most part, we have access to food, to water. We are free from the diseases of the past due to modern medicine. We are free from the time it takes to travel. We have conveniences of vehicles, bicycles, airplanes, etc. We are free in so many ways that the people of old never could imagine. Yet we are shackled in so many ways, shackled by dogma, shackled by the immediate communication that a platform like this gives us, where we have a constant influx of information and due to our own crafted ways of learning and taking in information, too, too often and so often, we humans, we the people of this country, just believe whatever comes into our eyes and ears. It's pretty heavy. Freedom is quite highly esteemed. Yet for many in this community that we reside in, this community of freedom lovers, lovers of liberty, liberty's good as long as it's the way we want it, right? Liberty's good as long as the expression of freedom fits our interpretation. Now look, in my opinion, the Second Amendment is not for hunting, it is not for target shooting. The Second Amendment added to the Constitution, there's a key point of me bringing this up, it was added to the Constitution. Think about that, added to the Constitution. It is there to allow us the right to protect ourselves over violent criminal predation, over animals, and over government. That is exactly what our founders intended. The Volstead Act, prohibition, was added to the Constitution. The Volstead Act was repealed, taken away. I get a lot of messages saying what's going on in this country, it's disgusting, it's terrible, it's evil, it's a conspiracy, it never was supposed to be this way. What, what are we supposed to be? The way that the founders crafted this nation, it wasn't supposed to be anything other than a canvas that you and me could paint our life. Now, we bring this up and we cannot overlook the blemishes of things like slavery, uh, things like, like how we got here, right? The Spaniards came to the Americas first. A lot of people don't remember that. They just think about the white people from up up in England in that area, but the Spaniards got here first. They marched through Mexico, raped and pillaged those people. I mean, bad. But then we got here and we did our thing to the indigenous folks, pretty damn shitty. I was just in the Everglades. There's some reservations there. I've been to numerous reservations across the country. And a lot of times the white people, the settlers, they took the indigenous people and shoved them into an area they didn't want. But later, a lot of times they took that back too. So there's a lot of bad stuff in our history. History, history, think about this, history. History is kind of like science. It's data that we can analyze 
to see what is or what was. The problem with history is oftentimes the victor writes history. So if you were to write the history of your life from the time you could remember to now, what would you include? What would you leave out? Would you tell all? Would you tell the truth? Or would you maybe leave a little bit out, maybe parts that you didn't want heard? Why I'm telling you this, we as a nation are still people. We, the people, to form a more perfect union, right? That's the beginning right there. A more perfect union, perfecting, working on it. Comes down to individuals. Are we, you and I, forming a more perfect me or you? See, we, we, especially in this community of gun people, freedom lovers, we talk about what government does or doesn't do, but we forget that it starts and stops with us. And until you and I can take total and ragged responsibility, I mean complete responsibility for everything in our life, for the physical condition of our body, for the contents of our bank account, for the contents of our heart, our soul, our brain, for the relationships that we have or don't have, how can we blame somebody else? Now look, government is full of shitty people. It's also full of a lot of good people. Businesses are full of shitty people. They're also full of a lot of good people. Where I'm going with this little message here is this. We spend a lot of time talking and thinking, looking for excuses and reasons about why our life isn't the way we want it. I'm going to tell you a story. I picked this story randomly because it, it tells the truth and it kind of goes against the narrative. So right now, today is, is uh, middle of December 2020. 2021's coming on fast and strong. This nation this year saw cops shot at record numbers. It saw cities tore apart by rioters, by looters, by thieves. It saw people out in the streets trying to have their voices heard because they didn't know any other way to do it. Not the same as rioters, looters, and thieves. It saw our laws shredded. And let me tell you one thing, our law without it, we are animals. Our laws and the freedoms enshrined in them are what separate us from every other country in the world. We are the freest and most generous and caring nation that has ever been on the face of this earth. And any evil that we have done comes from the hearts of an individual. There's no conspiracy. It all starts with people. Somebody decided to do something. Maybe that somebody got some help. By that I mean anything, good or bad, starts with an idea, a thought, and then somebody breathes action into it. What thoughts and ideas do you have and what action are you breathing into them? So I've got a lot of people talking to me about all that's going on in the world. Is Biden going to get in and take our guns? I don't know. I don't know, but can we do something about it? Of course we can. If you're old enough, you remember the Clinton era ban. If you're not old enough, do a little research and read about the Clinton era gun ban. Read about the National Firearms Act. Read about things like the Foyd Act here in my state of Illinois. Study history because history tells us what was. It also tells us about how we got where we are. And it's important for us to know that because that perfection of the union, as the founders talked about, we the people to form a more perfect union. Right now what's happening is our time to craft a more perfect union. It's our time, as they said in the Goonies, right now to do our part. See, when the light of history looks back on us and you're gone and I'm gone, Many of us won't be remembered, but those that are, the light of history has the opportunity to see what was. How do you want to be remembered? How do you want your deeds listed in the annals of mankind? We look at what's going on and we disregard what happened in the past, and in doing so, 
It's impossible for us to look clearly at what's around us now. If you can't see what was, if you disregard history, you disregard science, you disregard medicine because of dogmas that you hold on to or dogmas that were instilled in you, you will be ineffective in your life. You will be ineffective in perfecting the union that we have. You will be ineffective in perfecting yourself because without truth, there's nothing. If you had to list your life timeline now, would you leave anything out? Can you see clearly and can you own it? This isn't me saying, let's talk about the bad things we've done, but we must be able to be objective and see things for what they are. The story I'm about to tell you, it's not a happy story at all. And the reason that I chose this story is it's not that long ago. It's really close to home for me. It's just outside of Chicago. And it's very telling because people keep saying what's happening now never happened. What's happening now is not American. What's happening now, I'm going to tell you a story and you're going to see what's happening now has happened over and over and over in our history. It's not about Americans. It's about humans doing human things. What separates this is when somebody says, enough. That could be you, it could be me, but when we just watch and we do nothing, that's evil. On the evening of July 11th, 1951, one of the biggest riots in US history began after a young black couple moved into an apartment in all white Cicero, Illinois, west of Chicago. The husband, Harvey Clark Jr., was a World War II veteran who migrated to Chicago from Mississippi. And working as a bus driver, he and his wife, Jonetta, who met his students at Fisk University, decided to move up north there. They'd been crammed into a little tenement with their two young children. Just two rooms, the four family members. You know, we're pretty blessed now. Most of us have more space than people ever did. So they decided to leave that tenement and move up to Cicero. The couple found more space and cheaper rents in Cicero, closer to work. But when they got there, the sheriff turned them away. Can you imagine that today? When they first tried to move in, they were told, get out of here fast. There will be no moving in. By this time, the laws of the United States had begun to favor housing desegregation. So with court order in hand, the couple finally moved their belongings into the apartment on July 11th. A mob formed around them. Heckling and throwing rocks, the mob, many of them Eastern Europeans, grew to as many as 4,000. These were mostly immigrants, too. 4,000 people. Finally, the couple fled, unable to stay overnight in their new apartment. That night, the mob stormed the apartment and hurled the family's belongings out of a third floor window. The sofa, the chairs, the clothes, the baby pictures. The mob tore out the fixtures, the stove, the radiators, the sinks. They smashed the piano that the couple had saved up for for their young daughter to learn to play. They overturned the refrigerator. There's actually a photo of that, of that piano burned to a crisp in the yard if you'd like to see it. They bashed in the toilet. They then set all of the belongings on fire and then firebombed the building leaving every other tenant homeless. The rioters overturned police cars and threw stones at the firefighters who tried to put out the fire. The Illinois governor at the time was Stevenson, who, if you do a little research, went on to become a presidential candidate a few times and was made uh, a, a uh, diplomat by a uh, president at the time. He had to call in the National Guard, who had not been used since 1919 for race riots in Chicago. Well, the National Guard marching through our streets, it's, it's, you know, it's the end of the world, it's uh, revelations, it's the, it's the uh, martial law. It's actually why the National Guard exists, humans being humans. It took more than 600 guardsmen and police officers and sheriff's deputies to beat back the mob that night. It took three more days for the rioting over the Clarks to subside. The Clarks were prevented from ever spending a single night in Cicero. A total of 118 men were arrested in the rioting, but none were ever indicted. Instead, the rental agreement and the owner of the apartment buildings were indicted for inciting a riot by renting to the Clarks in the first place. Wow. This came from a book called The Warmth 
of Other Sons by Isabel Wilkerson's. Why I told you that is we have to remember these stories in order to see clearly what's happening today. What lies in the hearts of men has always been there. Oftentimes, it is as cut and dry as good as in evil. And most of the time, doing nothing is the same as evil. We have a choice, a conscious choice, every single day what we're going to put out into the world around us. No, what I'm telling you is not some pie-in-the-sky bullshit, namby-pamby nonsense. What I'm saying is, in order to protect and perfect, and, 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 sorry, perfect this union, we must take action. It is not at the edge of a sword or even a pen, but it is your actions every single day, how you live your life. When the totality of your life is remembered by your family, by your neighbors, by the people that you come in to uh, contact with on a daily basis, what will they remember? That is how this nation continues. You see, it's, it is that simple. The conspiracy is here. The conspiracy is we have removed ourselves from the functions of our society. We have allowed government to interact and reach into every part of our life. We have removed the responsibility of our own personal safety, educating our families, how we eat, when we eat, where we move, and, and, and how we move about. And we, the people, we, the people, have put all of those responsibilities off on government. Others that we choose to elect who know better than us. Take back the responsibility of knowing what's best for you. Yes, we need elected officials. Yes, we need law and order. Yes, I subscribe to law and order. Yes, I subscribe to the law. I think it's wonderful. But you and I must take personal, ragged, total responsibility for our lives. There will be comments here of people telling me all the reasons why what I'm saying doesn't work. What you, in your comment, are saying is you don't take responsibility for your life. What you're saying is I don't have the ability to affect or inject good or change into the world around me. The 56 men who signed the declaration, who put pen to paper, decided that they were going to affect change. Now, you might hear this and say, those men were slaveholders. They sure were. In under the light of what we know today, that's pure evil. I wasn't there and neither were you. If we had been, I sure hope we would have done something to affect and inject good in change. We cannot judge history through what we know today. We can judge history through what they knew then. What will people judge you for? How will people remember you? What will you do to proliferate and protect this union? If every day you spend your time looking for evil, that will be what fills your heart. That will be what fills your mind. If you're the type of person that fills my inbox with with stories of all of the bad stuff going on in this world, you know what you're not doing? You're not spending your time injecting good or change or right into your community, into your family, into the people that you work with, and into yourself. There's only so much time in the day. Your life is going by. You choose how to affect it. You choose what to do with it. Nobody else does. Nobody else. Tyranny? There's some tyranny going on in this world, but at the end of the day, tyranny comes down to you, to me, to somebody not doing the right thing, allowing, allowing evil to happen. What are you willing to do? What work are you willing to invest to keep liberty alive? Study history, books, books, not just the internet. Go to your library. Study the truth of mankind, not just the parts that make you feel good, but all of it, because in doing so, you understand your fellow man. And at the end of the day, there is a reason that the Stoics, there is a reason that philosophers really 
get things down to something as simple as just sitting in quiet and thinking about the beauty of life. Because in the, in the end, those little fragile moments are the most magical. I wish you well. I wish you peace. I wish that your life proliferates liberty around you. And I do sincerely, sincerely hope that you and I get to meet and do something together to make this world a better place. You fill in the blank spaces, only you do it.